Good, how are you? Good afternoon, Ari, and thank you for the strong showing for Beto O'Rourke. I think when you look at all the candidates collectively and you look at what they stand for, you might not agree with them on individual policies, but if you look at everything, their policy platforms, 
this guy's it right here. He knows how to get our economy moving and he knows to take, how to take care of the environment and he's got a great plan for immigration. This is our guy here, Erie. Introduce <laughs> my friend, Beto O'Rourke. Beto, thanks for coming. How's everybody doing? Thank you all, each of you, for being here today. Although we don't want to assume anything, many of you may have just been innocently drinking beer on a Thursday afternoon when a presidential candidate walked in. Myself, and then we're going to turn the microphone over to you, bring as many people into the conversation as possible. I have no hope of reflecting the genius of Erie, of being able to serve this community as president if I haven't first been here and had the chance to listen to the people of this community. And importantly, to try the IPA that they make right here right now. This community holds so many of the answers to the open questions in America right now. No one's working harder on these issues than you are and your representative Ryan Bizarro. So when we were talking today, we talked about ensuring that we have jobs, that pay well, that have high value, that provide dignity to those who want to work them, and ensure that they don't have to work a second or a third job that make ends meet. We're going to make sure that there's a minimum wage that everyone can live on in this country. We're going to make sure that we attract the employers right here to Erie, Pennsylvania, who will provide those jobs so that young people right now, in too many cases, who have moved to other communities in Pennsylvania or in America or across the planet, come back home to Erie to be with their families, to raise their families, to enrich this community and ensure the rest of the country knows how special Erie, Pennsylvania is. We talked about education, making sure that we have world-class public schools, getting behind the public school educators who work their hearts out every single day for every single child in front of them, making sure that they're paid to measure it with the value that they provide in that classroom. Acknowledge the sacrifices that they've made. Not only the schooling, the learning, but the debt that they took on to make sure that they can have the privilege of teaching our kids in the classroom. I served all the way back in World War II, Korea. Those who came back from Vietnam, sent off to a war that this country did not understand, raised their families, made their communities and this country great by extension, and right now, perhaps at a crossroads 50 years after their service, dealing with a post-traumatic stress disorder or the consequences of a traumatic brain injury that they never really acknowledged before and now need help eats and to address an epidemic of suicide amongst veterans in this country, more than 22 a day, every single day. Let us spare no expense, move every mountain, do whatever it takes to deliver for those veterans who delivered for us. Three million of us from two countries, speaking two languages, two cultures, two histories, joined to form one people, far greater, far bigger, far more powerful than the sum of their parts or the number of people involved. It is a magical place, just like Erie is a magical place. You all are a port of entry here. We're a land port of entry down there. We are the crossroads for so much of the Americas, and I'm so proud of that community, so lucky to be there, so grateful to share with you that we are one of, if not the safest cities in the United States of America, not despite, but because we're a city of immigrants, and the sons and daughters of immigrants, and asylum seekers, and refugees from the world over, who have found a home in our community and made it better by their very presence. As Republicans, as independents, as Americans first, before we are anything else, we rewrite this country's immigration laws in our own image, in the image of Erie, in the image of El Paso, in the image of America. Free every single dreamer from any fear of deportation by making them U.S. citizens in this, their true home country. Give people a legal, safe, quick, and orderly path to come to this country, to join family, or to work a job, or to go to school, or to renew and refresh this idea of America. That we are a people defined not by race, 
nor by religion, nor ethnicity, nor common genealogy, but instead by this idea that we are all created equal, equal. to equal opportunity. <laughs> Though we've never quite achieved this, we've never stopped working towards it, perhaps until this moment. A moment where you have a president who would define us along lines of religion, or race, or mm -hmm. ethnicity warns about Muslims being inherently dangerous or defective and has proposed to keep them all out of this country. In fact, the day that he signed the Muslim ban in 2017, the mosque in Victoria, Texas, in my home state, was burned to the ground. Hate crimes on the rise every single one of the last three years. Asking women of color duly elected to represent their constituents in Congress to go back to their home country, that signal is not lost on the rest of America, calling Klansmen and neo-Nazis very fine people. After they've marched and chanted, Jews, you will not replace us. The rhetoric does not just offend our sensibilities, it is changing this country and is putting in peril the lives of our fellow Americans. And in addition, y además, right now, we have the mother of all constitutional tests for this country. A president who has invited the involvement of a foreign power in our elections, yeah. not once, as he did in 2016, and then tried to cover up for it every year thereafter, but in this very year, 2019, asking the president of Ukraine to dig up dirt on a potential political rival to advance his own political career. Now, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat or an Independent, whether you voted for Trump or you voted for Hillary Clinton or you couldn't stomach either of them and you didn't vote at all, right. you understand that this democracy, our country, is on the line at this moment. If we set the precedent that some people are above the law because of the position of power or public trust that they hold, we will lose this country and this democracy forever. There must be consequences, there must be accountability, and there must be justice. How are we going to make sure that the communities of El Paso and Erie and those all across the United States in points in between can rise to their full potential and fulfill their promise and by extension help this country to fulfill its promise as well? Let's make sure that we're focusing on one another, listening to one another as Ryan asked me to listen to him when I started this race and invited me to Erie and what has brought me here today. Let's make sure that we're investing in the well-being of our fellow Americans. In my home state of Texas, the largest provider of mental health care services is the county jail system so that you have people with schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, clinical depression, getting arrested on purpose to be taken to the one place where they're guaranteed care, a roof over their head, clothes on their back, a prescription to a psychotropic medication that temporarily makes life bearable for them? What if they didn't have to worry about that because we, as Americans, decided that we were going to focus on universal, guaranteed, high-quality health care in this country? Mental health care, primary health care, prescription medication health care, Every woman making her own decisions about her own body. We can do this in this country. We just have to decide that we're going to do this in this country. What if for those who want to go to college at a time that there's $1.5 trillion in outstanding student loan debt, we ensure that if you're holding some of that debt and you commit yourself to public service, Working in the VA, where we have 40,000 unfilled clinical positions right now, if you're about to go to college, we'll make sure the first two years are free, that four years are debt-free, not just for tuition, but room and board and books. And that we follow the lead of this community, some of the, the concerns and opportunities that you've raised with me just on my visit today, and we invest in a community college right here in here in Pennsylvania. So anybody who wants to better themselves can do so at no cost to themselves or their families. We were just at Don John right now, and they were talking about the number of jobs that are connected to Don John and the dry dock here in this community, but they also talked about 
the number of jobs outside of this community, contractors and small businesses that are brought to Erie, Pennsylvania to do some of the work here. What if we could grow more of our own or return more of our own, make sure that capital is available to entrepreneurs and small business owners. They can brew more beer. They can train more welders. They, they can bring more young people back to this community. Unions, higher education, economic opportunity. Many people come from so many other parts of the country and Canada and the world to see the lake here, to be on the shore, to um, enjoy one another's company, to see what is so beautiful and hidden for me in El Paso, never heard about what was going on here. But if the climate continues to change, if this planet continues to cook, if we have another degree and a half Celsius of warming over pre-industrial revolution levels, the three feet of lake rise that you've seen in Erie so far, the algae blooms that make this water dangerous when they appear and diminish our ability to access the largest source of fresh water on planet Earth, and to attract those tourists to this community, all of that is undermined and compromised. And the high value, high wage, high skilled jobs that come with them ensure that rural communities and farmers are paid to do their part as well, planting cover crops that pull more carbon out of the air and using no-till and precision-till farming to sequester it more, more of it in the soil. In other words, no half steps, no half measures, no half the country. All of us in common cause together for America, for every generation that follows us, doing what we can while we still have time. It is the only way that I know of that I can look my kids in the eye because it is their judgment that I fear more than anything else in my future. So while we have time, let's do this. Let's make sure that we confront climate change and make the United States of America the leader in the world on this issue. I really want to make sure that everyone is able to fully participate in this country's success. What if, in addition to trying to end discrimination in the workplace, we ratified the Equal Rights Amendment? Yeah. So there's no question. As president, I'm going to sign the Equality Act into law to make sure that the full civil rights of every single American are protected in America. There's 10 times the wealth right now in white America than there is in black America. Not by accident, by design. So an African American child is five times as likely to be disciplined or suspended or expelled as a white child in the same class for the same infraction in front of the same teacher. A schoolhouse to jailhouse pipeline that begins, not as I assumed in high school, but when a child is four or five years old, and we understand that in this country, Three times the mortality risk for women of color as white women in this country right now. So every single dynamic that you can think of is different for our fellow Americans based on the color of their skin. 2.3 million of our fellow Americans are behind bars right now. As we enjoy our freedom, one another's company, and that IPA that someone is gonna bring me at some point during this conversation. <laughs> Prison population, the largest on planet Earth is disproportionately comprised of people of color. People who are behind bars for possession of marijuana, a substance that is legal in more than half the states of this country, they're rotting behind bars while executives at Purdue Pharma and Johnson & Johnson, which sold opioids to hundreds of thousands of people in this country, and opioid overdose, death, crisis, and epidemic, have not spent a single minute behind bars. It's the only way we're gonna be firing on all cylinders, is this every single American is able to participate in this economy, in civic life, in our democracy, and in the future of America. That's why I'm running, and this is the way that I'm running. Going everywhere, including El Paso and Erie, Pennsylvania, bringing in everyone. No me importa, I do not care if you're a Republican. If you are and you're here, you're in the right place. Yeah. If you're a Democrat and you're here, you're in the right place. Independents, we welcome you as well. All of us together, before we are anything else, defining ourselves as Americans first. That's how we're going to do it. Thank you, Erie, for having us out here today. Very grateful for the chance to have met you. I, I will, I will, I was just asked to come back. I will come back. I tried the beer. I can attest to the rest of the country you need to come to Erie. All right?
what's different about your health care plan and how do we solve what is broken with a very broken system? Thank you for the question. So there are two choices that many of us understand when it comes to the future of health care in this country, at least represented by candidates who seek the nomination from the Democratic Party. The first is universal health care through a Medicare for all model, which says that everyone who is uninsured gets to enroll in Medicare, and everyone who's insured through a private payer, more than 150 million, will have to leave their insurance and move over to Medicare. It's, it's an all or nothing gambit. There are others, um, Joe Biden perhaps most famously among them, who say that we'll just improve the Affordable Care Act at the margins. We'll include a public option. You're welcome to buy into insurance if that's what you really want to do. So, Cynthia's telling me that is our last question, but we're going to hang out for a little bit for anyone who would like to take a picture yes. or give me the opportunity to thank you in person and shake your hand. We're going to step outside. You all have done such an amazing job with the weather today. We want to enjoy that outside together. Thank you for having me out. Thank you, Representative.